Welcome back to another edition of Eat My Shorts right here at the Ranch here, smoking me a camel cigarette, getting the life sorted out, one problem to a time. After my ride to town to um, get some things, because I needed things, I got to thinking about George and the Goose story. Uh, you might enjoy this. Um, Hillbilly Homesteader, 1776. I, I linked him in the last video. If you don't know who he is, uh, check him out. I've been following him for a lot of years now, and he's out there in the eastern seaboard doing all the things and the stuff that everybody wants to do. Uh, he butchered turkey on a live stream today and brought up another rant I had. So this happened in my early 20s, uh, back when I was a bad young man. Uh, the side of the recession, everybody was unemployed. You know, Bills needed paid, mouths needed fed, and... Uh, you know, it was hard times, even harder than now. And uh, as I spent about five years in bed on my back after I broke my spine, I was just finally up walking around with a cane. Like, this was a miserable five years of my life. Them six ladies I spent in bed with filming naughty videos on the internet are probably the only reason why I made it through that dark period in my life. Anyway, I digress. Uh, So there were lots of um, various substances involved in my in my formative years growing up, and uh, it only got worse after my back was broken and I needed to get up and walk around to do things and pay bills and make money the hard way. And one of these stories involved copious amounts of crystal methamphetamine. Yes, I know, drugs are bad, don't do drugs, kids. Uh, uh, if you do do drugs, do them safely, hygienically, and at home, and in the proper dosage, in the proper context, under proper medical supervision. That being said, uh, I was not always that smart as a young man. So I had been up for a while uh, drinking, and at this point I think I was actually injecting rock amphetamine. I can't even fucking remember. But a buddy of mine, of course, he liked to party too, and him and his little goon we used to cut firewood with, uh, they were out smoking crank by the fucking lake, I think. I, I don't remember. I wasn't there for this part of it. But the way it was told to me, uh, genius being read, got this brilliant idea, hey, the trunk's open, and there's this giant, massive park goose here. I'm hungry. So, how do you catch a giant goose? Well, cool ranch Doritos, and you bait them in the trunk of the car. Now, they get this dumb bastard in the trunk, and he's big enough the trunk barely shut. Well, they got the trunk shut. And when they did, they trapped him. Sorry, folks. Big lady walking her dog. Don't, like, put my neighbors on the spot. And, and I don't really want them thinking I'm a nut job talking on my cell phone. Anyway. So they get this big-ass trunk goose in the car. I mean, this thing, massive, is probably 40 pounds of fucking evil honk and flapping wingspan. Now, I had probably slept one off after some awful sort of bender I was on. I know, because I did this a lot as a young man. And, uh, what happened was, I get a call on my cell phone. This is back in the days of flipped goddamn fucking apartment noises. Ugh. I digress. Anyway, I get a call on my cell phone. Hey, come open the garage, man. It's like, why? It's like, just come open the garage. So my friend backs his car in there, and I hear this awful honking and flapping in the trunk of his car, and I'm thinking, what the fuck? fuck are you tweak fucks up to? And he starts giggling. He's like, hey man, you, you know anything about processing game? I'm like, uh, why? And this time this thing's honking, flapping, thrashing the fuck out of this car. This is a little Ford car from the 90s. I and mean, this thing was thrashing around. This goose was fucking pissed. Okay. Now, at this point, bad decision time had already taken hold. Okay. I fully own this. This is not my idea, but I was participation in it, so by default, it's probably my fault. So, we get a game plan together. So, all right, dipshit, meaning red, the uh, little tweak fuck with the ginger, you know, they don't have any souls. So, you catch this fucking thing by the head, and when it starts flapping its feet around, George, you grab it by the feet. Okay. So they grabbed this fucking thing after they popped the trunk open. This thing was flat. Oh, God, the conk. I mean, it was pissed. And I drew the short straw in the sense that I zip-tied its legs together. So they had a place to carry this thing. 
Now, we had a bunch of firewood cut out back because back then I was cutting firewood up in the woods with a four-foot chainsaw that had enough horsepower to kick a 250-man man across the house. And uh, get the brilliant idea. So, okay, lay its head on the fucking stump. It's flapping around. Knock its head off, and I'll show you what to do after there. So, funk, right? Now, at this point, my black lab had come outside. He, he also drank, by the way. He was part lab, part pit bull. He was a fun dog. I miss the hell out of Rufus. <clears throat> now this thing's flapping around that it's fucking head. You know, fucking doing its thing. Right? Blood spraying everywhere. And I'm standing there. Of course, I got blood all over me because I'm standing there having a fucking malt liquor because, you know, why wasn't I? I was in my 20s. And this thing finally runs out of wind, right? Now, my friend, I told him to lean into it and start plucking the feathers. You want to do that before it gets cold, right? That's kind of important. Now, as he leans into this thing and my dog comes running over, you know, like, ooh, I got a friend to play with. And he sees all these feathers flying. You know, he's fucking curious because he's a dog. And my friend leans into this thing, and apparently he had cut it far enough up the neck that the honker was still intact. So he leaned into it, it kind of, like a bagpipe, and made a goose noise. It scared the fuck out of my dog. It was funny as hell. You should have seen my dog. He jumped like six feet in the air from a standstill, you know, like when you scare a cat. They proceeded to feather this thing, and uh, they didn't know how to gut it, cook it, or anything. I just told them to roast it whole. Some garlic, some onions, some carrots, potatoes, you know, all the things. And tried it as we might. This thing was gamey, gamey, gamey. But my friend ate it. You know, I, I mean, I tried some. It was terrible, but this is why I don't care for wild game of the uh, waterfowl varieties, because it tastes like pond scum. But these are things to consider, you know, like knowing how to do some stuff. Like if you ever... Or in a survival situation, all you have is Doritos, you know, you can catch a goose that way. I know because my friends did it. And as always, if you like the video, like the video, share, subscribe, commentate, do all the scummy YouTube shit, you know, uh, take care, God bless, grow good food, do the things, have a wonderful day, go fuck yourself, bye, and until we meet again, eat my shorts.